I've got my little guy Sage here. So here is the little swag bag. In the gift bag, there were these baby wipes from Coterie, this Boone Pulp silicone feeder. You guys can probably see he has a little bald spot here, um, basically just because babies are laid on their back. So, so I'm just super exhausted. So hopefully this coffee will help me kind of keep it together, keep it concise, because sometimes I do tend to ramble. I'm gonna be 31 in June, so I also have to, although I'm trying to like extend this chance, this opportunity for us to be able to be together. It's hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Esperanza. I am a full-time blogger and content creator. So you may hear my son, Sage Wilder, uh, making some noises. I am carrying him in my baby carrier, as you guys can see. Uh, I am a single mom, so this is just kind of like the best way for me to be able to get things done. You guys can probably see he has a little bald spot here, um, basically just because babies are laid on their back. So um, he gets a little bald spot from laying on his back. His head just gets rubbed a lot in that spot, but I'm told that eventually that hair grows back. So anyways, so like I said, I am a single mom. I am currently living in Phoenix, Arizona with my parents um, who retired here from Eastern Washington. And I've actually been here for a little over six months, which is crazy. The last like three and a half months of my pregnancy, um, which ended up going a little bit longer because I ended up being almost 42 weeks pregnant when I had Sage, I had to be induced. Um, and then he is now 10 weeks old, so a little over six months, which is just crazy. So anyway, in today's video, I wanted to do a update, a breakup update as I've been calling these videos. Um, for those of you who have been following along, you pretty much know the story, but I wanted to, I'll probably do like a quick recap for those of you who maybe have just stumbled onto my channel. Um, I did just get back from Eastern Washington. I went there for a week with Sage. We flew down so that Sage and his father, my uh, partner of 10 years, could meet for the first time. So it was definitely a little bit of a tough trip. So I want to tell you guys all about that. But first I want to cut to a fun little like family uh, baby event that my mom and Sage and I went to with Tubby Todd in Mesa, which is in the Phoenix area. So I did do some, um, I like, took some video clips there of that cute event. And then I also share a haul of what I got in my swag bag. So let's cut to that. And then I will go ahead and give you guys that update. just got back from the Tubby Todd event and I thought I would show you guys what was in that swag bag. Got my little guy Sage here. So here is the little swag bag that they were giving out. It says do something for yourself today. So we grabbed a bunch of extra snacks because Once Upon a Farm was there and this brand Unreal and then in the gift bag there were these baby wipes from coterie this boon pulp silicone feeder a few products from tubby todd spf 50 mineral sunscreen hair and body wash in the pear blossom scent let's see what is this all purpose hand wash or something like that from branch basics these little sippy cups from the first few years, snacks from Lester Evil, and um, some stickers and stuff 
So lots of fun things here, snacks and baby stuff. And it was a very fun event. The first event Sage and I went went to together and he actually slept the entire time oh. in my little baby carrier. Okay, so I had some coffee because I'm hoping that this will help me um, be able to give you guys this update. I am actually alone for the week. Usually my parents are here to kind of like hold Sage a little bit in the evenings, which gives me a little bit of a break, but uh, we were all by ourselves yesterday. So I am feeling pretty tired today. I also had, um, like before I went down to Eastern Washington, I had to film, uh, like three campaigns, all of my sister was here, uh, film them, edit them, send them over just so that I could have that week free in Washington. And then when I got back, I had like three more campaigns to film. So it has just been nuts. And um, we had some family visit. So it's obviously great that I'm getting those campaigns because I am a full-time blogger and content creator. That's what I've been doing for um, about eight years now. And that's how I pay my bills. That's how I'm providing for um, Sage and I's future. So very, very thankful for those, but obviously it's just a lot of work, especially with a two and a half month old baby and as a single mom. So I'm just super exhausted. So hopefully this coffee will help me kind of keep it together, keep it concise because sometimes I do tend to ramble. Okay, so for just a quick summary for those of you who are new here, um, my partner Skylar and I had been together for 10 years. We were engaged for almost three. Um, Skylar really is the one who kind of helped me launch my blog and grow my social media following um, and all of that. Like he has been with me since the beginning. We had moved around the country for about five years. The first five years of our relationship were in Washington and Oregon. Um, but the last five years, we were actually traveling around the country. We moved to Nashville um, in 2020, and then we ended up leaving Nashville, moving to Pittsburgh, where we were at for three years. Um, and then we moved back to Eastern Washington, where we were gonna just like save up some money while living at his dad's house and then move to Las Vegas. That was the plan. And so that plan got a little bit changed because um, I ended up, so basically we were engaged, like I'd said, we were planning on getting married actually this year um, in Europe. Uh, the plan was Italy with my family. We were kind of, my family and I were planning to um, rent like a villa in Italy and do a wedding there. So we had that in the works. And then Skylar actually kind of convinced me that basically I had always wanted to have a baby, but I wanted us to wait until, until we were officially married before trying to have a baby. So we had been together for 10 years still hadn't had a baby that whole time because I just wanted us to get into like that place um, where I felt like I would be comfortable, which was after we'd gotten married and been like settled, like hopefully in a rental house at least. Uh, but Skylar had convinced me that we should just go ahead and try to start having a baby, especially because I'm now 30. Actually, I was 30 when I got pregnant and um, we didn't really know if either of us would have like infertility struggles or anything because we hadn't tried to get pregnant before. And so um, basically we kind of thought like, well, we might as well start trying now because what if we do have uh, problems later on down the road and you know, it might just be like difficult to try to get pregnant later. What if we have to do some kind of like route with infertility? So he said, let's just start trying. We know we're going to be together. We know that we're going to get married. And so because of those uh, reasons, I decided to go ahead and try to get pregnant. Uh, we had a miscarriage, our first uh, go of it, and then conceived baby Sage, 
uh, like the following month. So something that is kind of important for you guys to know is that Skylar actually um, had been struggling with his mental health during our relationship. But for me, it, I always kind of thought that it was like explainable. Um, so, you, you know, he would have like anxiety and he would have depression. Sometimes his anxiety could get pretty manic, but I felt like all of it was pretty normal or explainable because a lot of people struggle with those things. But when I was about five and a half months pregnant, he basically ended up having like a manic episode or like a mental breakdown, if you will, and um, decided that it would be best if we broke up. So this was obviously because of whatever was going on um, with him mentally. He just believed that it would be better off if we had, if we split. So he quickly kind of went back on that the next, over the next few days. But then about a week and a half later, um, he had another manic episode and said again that we needed to break up. So obviously for me, this was such a shock and it was very scary because, you know, at first I just thought like maybe he's just having cold feet. Um, but then when it happened again, that's what made me just kind of realize that whatever was going on with him mentally was way worse than I really had ever imagined before. And so um, obviously like over that two week period, I was just so devastated, crying every day, anxiety, and all the things I was feeling I knew were not good for Sage for baby boy at the time. Like I just knew that it wasn't good for the baby that was growing in my belly. So um, I had to basically just take him for his word, especially because I kept trying to convince him that this was obviously a mental health issue and that he should go get help. But no matter what I said, I couldn't convince him. So um, at the time my parents were visiting because I have family um, in Oregon, very close to Eastern Washington. And so um, I basically just had to reach out to my parents and tell them that I needed to move in with them, what was going on and all of that. Um, and then, so it basically took us like four and a half days or something to like pack everything up. And he was not getting better during those days mentally. And so the day that we actually hit the road, um, about two and a half hours into our drive, uh, Skylar started calling me and immediately saying like, come back, come back. Um, he realized that he was making like a big mistake and everything. But at that point, too much had happened and it wasn't going to be possible for me to just kind of forget that he had this, um, what was a much more severe mental issue than I had originally thought. And he was still not wanting to get help at that time. So I had to just continue on to Phoenix. And I did set down some expectations for him to meet should he really want to be able to get us back together as a family. So that was obviously the hardest thing that I've ever had to go through. And I didn't want to have to go through with it. I never wanted to be put in that position in the first place. And I never thought that I would be. Otherwise, I obviously wouldn't have gotten pregnant. Uh, so that was just very devastating for me. The rest of my pregnancy, which was like three and a half ish, four months, um, I just was going through such a rough time, like crying myself to sleep basically every night, anxiety attacks, uh, the works, because I basically was losing my person, um, my partner, my best friend of 10 years, who I thought I was going to marry, who I was having a baby with, and thought that I'd be with for the rest of my life as a family. So that was such a devastating uh, loss for me to have to go through while pregnant but I was also trying to do what was best for my son, especially if Skylar wasn't going to be able to get help. And at that time, I think we talked maybe uh, like three or four times and he still wasn't wanting to go get help, which was just one of the things that I was expecting for him to do. So then cut to 
basically the month I was about to give, the month where I was going to be giving birth to Sage is when he finally did go and get help. So I actually did get to talk to him right before going into the hospital to get induced. I had a very traumatic uh, labor and delivery um, for me with like three days of labor, C-section, baby in the NICU, all that kind of thing. So just every pregnancy nightmare that I've ever had, including the nightmare of being like dumped while pregnant, happened to me. So as you can imagine, I've just really been through a lot. And also knowing that the father of my baby did indeed have a mental illness was uh, very tough as well, um, especially when he wasn't going to get help, especially when he wasn't willing to get help. And then when even when he did finally get help and get diagnosed and everything, um, all of it has just been really hard. And I've talked with Skylar and he's always been okay with me sharing this. I do try to be a little bit discreet um, just because I know that, you know, Sage is maybe gonna watch these videos one day or hear the story and all of that. So I try to be very considerate and um, gracious about all of this, especially because mental health is just such a, mental health and mental illness are so serious and a lot of people struggle with these issues. And um, so it's just a very tough, situation. So anyway, I was able to talk with him pretty much every week since Sage was born. And so I uh, ended up flying down to Eastern Washington um, so that Skylar, Sage's dad, and he could meet and so that his sister could meet Sage, his um, uh, dad, Sage's grandpa could meet him. So I was just there for a week and that um, visit went really well. I know that they all just like fell in love with Sage. So it was kind of like a mix of emotions while I was um, down there because obviously it was so cute to see Sage and Skylar together, but it was also very emotional for me um, because I had thought that we would be a family together every day of my pregnancy and every day since Sage was born. And that obviously hasn't been the case. So it just feels like so much missed time or like Skylar's missing out on so much of um, baby Sage. So that is really sad. Um, but while I was down there, he helped with uh, every diaper change. He helped give baby Sage bottle. Um, he actually really loved carrying him in my ergo baby carrier. Uh, we got to go out um, and about several times and he would carry Sage in the carrier. Um, and so that was really, really cute to see. And um, I'm glad they were able to spend like that quality time together. And while I was there, uh, he was just so helpful with everything as far as getting me water and um, making every meal and all of that, which, um, you know, I don't have that help from a partner right now because right now I'm, you know, a single mom basically. And although my parents kind of help with Sage in the evening, they do have like busy, full um, lives. So I don't have like you know, help 24 seven, like you would if you had a partner. Although, you know, a lot of the times like your partner works during the day or whatever, but just in general, having that little bit of help um, was just, it felt so good. And so all of that kind of like sucks because I can't have that right now. Um, like I said, I have certain expectations that Skylar would have to meet for us to be able to be a family again but we were able to talk through all of that over like several days and we did come up with a plan that um we're both comfortable with and expectations that we're both comfortable with for him to meet in order for us to be able to be a family which i don't want to really get into um maybe i'll touch on those things like as the months progress but we basically just have to see how things go. Um, and for now we're doing like FaceTimes every week so that uh, baby Sage and Skylar can see each other's face. And so he can see how much Sage is changing, which is just so rapidly, it's just crazy. 
So like I said, none of this is anything that I ever wanted. Um, my life just like totally was derailed by this. Uh, but I'm also trying to do what's best for Sage and what's best for myself as well. And there are certain things that we need and deserve. So I'm of course hoping and praying that everything can be able to work out so that we can be a family again, but that remains to be seen. And you know, I'm 30 years old, I'm gonna be 31 in June. So I also have to, although I'm trying to like extend this chance, this opportunity for us to be able to be together, if those things aren't met, I would basically need to be open to dating and meeting um, another man because I of course deserve to have a partner and Sage deserves to have someone who can be a full-time um, dad and all of those things. So it's such a complicated situation and um, I'm just really hoping and praying for the best, but we'll just have to see how things go. So I wanted to give you guys this update. I've been very open about everything going on with this situation since the beginning. And um, it's honestly been so amazing to see the support that I have gotten. Um, so many other single moms have shared their stories, uh, some similar. So it's been very amazing to see that support, but also there's obviously been a lot of negativity anytime that you kind of like open up and share uh personal things like this you're going to get some positive and some negative uh responses and of course it was tough to see some of the negative responses about skylar and all of that because you know not it's hard to when you don't know the full picture when you don't know the whole situation and obviously i can't share every detail about his mental health or anything like that so um of course, some people aren't gonna fully understand the whole picture, but a lot of you have actually said that you were praying for Skylar and praying for me and praying for my baby. And I'm so, so thankful for that. Um, you guys really have no idea how much I have appreciated that um, support and just like kindness and um, uplifting words and, especially during my pregnancy and postpartum and all of that has meant so much to me. And you know, just being like a blogger or content creator who's kind of always shared my life, I kind of had to be able to share what's going on in my life in order to be able to like continue to move on in a way that made sense for my life, for my mental health. And so that's part of why I've shared this and also part of it has been to um, basically just be able to inspire or reach or touch in like some kind of positive way others who have been through a similar situation or are currently going through a similar situation which it seems to be that it has based on a lot of the messages I've gotten so I'm very thankful for that. Okay so that is the update for now your prayers and your kind words and support are very much welcome. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed my um, story and just being like very open and vulnerable with what's going on in my life. It's definitely not easy to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and also be sure to share with someone that you think would enjoy my channel as well. Uh, that would just be amazing. Anything that you guys can do to help me grow on here is just such a huge support because it's a little bit tough to grow on YouTube, reach new audiences, and that is such a great way that you guys can help me. Also be sure to check out my socials at The Urban Darling and my blog, theurbandarling.com for more content. And I will see you guys in my next videos. Bye.